Welcome to another episode of Two Ales and Hockey Tales with Wally, brought to you by Property Valet and their booking site, Stay in Blue, located in the Blue Mountains, Ontario. And today, I am so excited to have on a 35-year-old from Lucknow, Ontario. His hockey journey took him, has taken him to Canada, the USA, France, Germany, and Austria. He's played for Team Canada in the Deutschland Cup. He has played Fünf Jahres in the DEL, or five years. He also had the most goals by a defenseman one season. And he's played three years crushing Red Bulls in Austria. And he's a Kelly and Calder Cup champion and a Deutsche Meister. Um, and he's a staple around the Lucknow Lancers minor hockey program. The Owen Sound Sogging Shore Grays, and uh, he's also known as the Lucknow Tornado for the Burlington Cougars. Welcome to the podcast, Bobby Raymond. Yeah, thanks for having me, Wally. But uh, no thanks for mentioning my age. Hopefully, uh, any of the teams in the market out there didn't uh, catch that. Oh, well, you look a lot younger than me. I, so yeah, I guess we are somewhat close in age, and I, I actually we don't know each other, eh? No, but I obviously, uh, you played in Elmira a little bit before I played uh, for the Grays, so I knew knew of your uh, stat line um, <laughs> before I came in there and then uh, uh, followed you along a little bit when you're at Western Michigan and, and in Europe. Well, and that would have been why I know about the Lucknow Tornado was because you played a season with the Burlington Cougars with my college roommate, Andrew Dwyer, Stretch, which was a, an episode earlier on here and the guest host for my episode. So um, you uh, met Stretch. Was he Stretch back then or was he uh, still just a young teenager? Uh, di didn't go by Stretch yet, but... Uh... Yeah, he was 17 year old. So it was only his second year, but he was in junior, but he was captain already and uh, to Western Michigan the next year. But um, I've actually ran into him a few times since as well, because he's uh, buddies with my uh, billet brother. So we've, we've had a couple uh, um, escapades since then anyway. Well, um, <laughs> that's funny. So if he was your captain, <laughs> you guys could have been very good that day. Eh? Um, I, I won't say that's the, um, <laughs> thought process of it, but yes, we weren't very good. And yeah, no, he actually, I told me you guys weren't good back then, but I was just going to blame it on him being a captain. But anyways, um, how we set this up is another way we know each other was, uh, Mersey, um, socially distanced very far away, way before this lockdown, um, and stopped by for a beer. And we brought up the idea of having a locals um week or two so uh i i brought up your name because i know about your career as hockey guys know about these things and one of those reasons is why i is because uh, now that i live here i keep getting asked if i know you and i keep having to tell them no i don't <laughs> yeah pretty much well the, the routes we both took we uh ended up a lot of the similar places so people definitely kind of expect that well, it is strange, actually, that we've never met, and now we're meeting on a podcast, and I'm in my shed. And um, so, where are you uh, right now? And I'm stuck, quarantined in uh, my parents' house. So I just got back from Europe. I wasn't able to fly back to the states um, since I don't have any status there. So my fiance's there. wasn't allowed to fly directly in. Did the old the hotel quarantine down there in Toronto. And uh, now I'm, I'm stuck in the master bedroom here. My parents moved out so that I could have the room with its own TV and its own bathroom and stuff. Okay. So you've gone from Iserlohn, Germany to Lucknow. That would be a bit of a culture shock then, huh? Well, like I think you're used to it at this point, obviously I'm used to it in that, but um, overall in the hockey world, I'd say it's not, not too far apart because, uh, he's alone is definitely, you know, the smaller town of the teams in the DEL. And, you know, when we were growing up playing in Lucknow, I think the guys older than us won so many times we ended up in a, um, C, which was a higher class 
than the size of our town. So we always felt like the, you know, we were playing up against towns a bit bigger than us. Um, little underdog mentality and that's uh same kind of feel in easer loan. So uh, some, some of the city folks aren't the biggest fans of easer loan, but for me, it's still a big city after becoming okay. a Um Well, I guess actually I probably should mention this now at the start of the episode is what I mentioned at the start there is that the pod has its first sponsor, like a real one. And um, folks, this is real. I actually could make money drinking beers with my friends in my shed if if people actually book so folks listen to this and then put in the wally 20 okay here we go this episode was brought to you by property valet it is a vacation rental management renovation and home solutions outfit they have a rapid response team of licensed electricians plumbers hvac techs and gas fitters carpenters for all your home maintenance and service deeds and if you own a home in the blue mountain area mention the wally podcast for a free home systems assessment at www.propertyvalet.ca and this is how i actually make money folks stay in blue Whether you are looking for a short-term vacation or a full season stay in the Blue Mountains area, they are the vacation rental service you can trust. To provide an enjoyable stay every time, vacationers will not be disappointed with the variety of premium property listings available for booking when you stay with them. You as a guest are entitled to guest privileges including deals, discounts, and perks with their many local partnerships. The Blue Mountains area is beautiful all year round, and there is so much to discover, which is why they have rentals perfect for every season. So go to www.stayinblue.ca and book your next trip now. And the discount code is wally 20 for 20% off anything three night minimum booking. You're going to get 20% off seriously for putting Wally 20 in, folks. That's nuts at www.stayinblue.ca. So big, big moment for the pod. So cheers. Have your water and I'll have my beer. Cheers. You, you sounded like a veteran there. Really? Other, other than privileges. I know. I Just stumbled right there. Through it. I know. It must suck to be an active player. You're drinking your water. Jeepers. I remember those days. I I don't think uh, in Germany, though, that uh, wouldn't cut it, you know? No, no, you would get shaved actually, yeah, for just having waters all the time in Germany. So is it still somewhat the same over there? Like, if you have a good weekend, is there still a case of beer in the room? Yeah, for sure. Like, uh, it's pretty uh, reasonable, like on the bus, you can always have a couple and stuff. Um, yeah. Obviously, if you got games coming up real close, it's going to be, um, you know, limited. But um, if, if you're not play, if you play on Sunday and you're not playing again until Friday, then definitely uh, enough around. Okay. Well, I guess uh, we should get into this um, is – we talked about where are you now, but uh, your season ended in Iserloan. So how did it end? How did the season end? Um, we we actually we had to win. Um, I don't know how many games we won. It felt like we won every game for five weeks, but uh, we were chasing Dusseldorf, and they were winning every game too. So last game of the regular season, we had to win, and they needed to lose. So we won our game. They were playing Munich and uh, Munich beat them like 6-1, I think. So that got us in the playoffs. And uh, so we were the four seed in the north, played Berlin, was number one. We won the first game there in Berlin and then uh, lost the next two, unfortunately. So So it's just the best of three? Yeah, this year just uh, with the shortened COVID season, it was uh, – we played all the teams in the north 
I think uh, six times to start the season, then home and home with the South teams and playoffs were just best of three so that they could uh, keep as many teams playing as long as possible. Well, at least you guys got to play, man. There's a lot of guys out there that never got to play. There's a lot of guys sitting at home going, am I retired? Am I not retired? Like, what am I doing with my life? And absolutely. Yeah. Was- you're lucky you got to play, man. You must, uh, you must be uh, like, realistically, Isard Load must really, really like you. So are you going back there next year? Do you know? Um, still, still to be determined. Um, we'll probably hear from them this week. Um, you know, they, They've definitely, they've signed a few of the imports back already. Um, but obviously the, the German players get signed first and I'm uh, a little further down the totem pole at this stage than I once was. So uh, I'm, I'm hoping to go back and um, yeah, so we'll probably, probably know within a week. Okay. Well, good luck. Um, I know it's always a stressful time of year, man. I remember that. I remember moving home and, um, I never made it. Well, no, you're young still. Um, but anyways, moving on. Um, what, so you mentioned a little bit what it was like in minor hockey and luck now, but is that what you played? Did you ever go triple a? Um, yeah, I just, I always played luck now until, uh, you know, like my, what would be your OHL draft year. Right. Um, I wasn't focused on that. didn't really know what that was until, uh, until we were away at a summer hockey tournament and some guys were watching to see if they um, got drafted. But uh, yeah, I played minor hockey in Lucknow the entire time. Triple A had kind of started to take off, but not everyone was leaving, you know? So um, we had a pretty strong team for our age group in town. And, um, you know, those are the guys I'm still buddies with today. So we wanted to, try to win OMHA together and we definitely didn't manage to do that but I I stayed in Lucknow and uh definitely don't regret the extra years here to uh play with those guys well obviously like they find you anywhere right if you only played Lucknow minor hockey as they say you'll wherever you are if you're a good hockey player you're gonna get found I guess right yeah, there, there's a lot. There's there's enough places that uh, eventually you'll uh, you'll find your way. It might be a little different path, but it actually the under seventeen tryouts were pretty quick catalyst. But I think otherwise, the next year there was I still would have probably ended up with either like Owen Sound um, or Strathroy Junior B already had um, seen me a bit. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, it's curious. Like, cause I've skated at the Lucknow arena, um, like at Christmas when they have like, you know, the family shinny or whatever. I always enjoy that stuff. Do you remember that? Go, did they have that back when you were a kid, the family shinny or like the, all the public skates, I guess all the free skates. It, like we, we had, uh, we had our classic, you know, Sunday group, um, pick up hockey where that was, you know, that's every complete random age um, and caliber of player possible, you know, but um, yeah, we like, I, I still love, I got a chance to go on that ice this year just uh, due to the odd season schedule. And it was pretty, uh, pretty sweet to be back out there. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty cold out there though. Like really Absolutely. cold. Yeah. One of the coldest arenas, uh, coming from pro arenas, it uh, your face yeah, is. I, uh, I'm not into it at all, actually. <laughs> but like, nice well, rink and all, but like a little bit too cold for my likings. So maybe yeah. I'm soft. Who knows, right? Um, anyways, next question is: uh, so you go there to the Cougars because Stretch told me that you got found at an under 17 camp, whether or not that's true. But then you go back from there for a season or two. So you decide to move away from home at that point and then you decide to move kind of somewhat closer to home with going back to Owen Sound yeah I get, like as you said uh because Dwyer was our captain we weren't any good the first year so I survived that year in Burlington but uh the next year we actually had a really deep team you know got rid of the extra weight there and uh when he went to Western Michigan and 
we actually, we had a deep, real deep team and I was uh, one of only two guys on the team. You know, that year I was the only player that was billeted. So they came to my dad and asked if we could help um, pay for my billets because um, the cost was an issue for them. And we kind of like, well, geez, you know, we were used to that's part of it. Like that's expected that that's yeah. paid for. So we were like, geez, maybe, the, you know, this isn't the best situation if um, that's the case. So I'm not sure if we ever like really gave them an answer on that scenario, but after maybe a month and a half, um, I got sold to Olin Sound. Right. So, so then you go to Olin Sound then, which is somewhat near the area here with, for locals week. Um, and then, uh, you do get a scholarship to RIT, right? Out of there. Yeah. Went, uh. Actually, yeah, when I when I went to Owen Sound, then I was able, I actually stayed at home the first year just so I could graduate from Effie Medill and Wingham um, with my buddies and, you know, where your parents went to school and stuff. It's So small. Lucknow goes to Wingham? Yeah, um, pretty much everybody in Lucknow goes to Wingham. I didn't even know that. Jeez, I've lived here long enough to know that, you'd think. Anyways, okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, so you lived at home and then uh you did go to Owen Sound and live there? Yeah, the next couple of years I lived up there and uh I maybe you uh you work with Cody Hamilton? Yeah. Cody Cody and I lived together um my first year up there. Um obviously both Lucknow guys and uh that so we we had a bit of a house that was uh a bit of a party house and a little, you know, but somebody would always put up with it so that the team would have that, um, you know, place to hang out that there wasn't the stress. You were the, you were the older guys on the team where you guys actually had your own place. Well, no, no. Like I, we were with a billet, but it was just oh. like the basement was set up better for that scenario, but it wasn't, um, it wasn't, the best billet situation um anyway but i was older cody was first year but that was the only place we could live together and we wanted to be together there so uh but after a while i, I let cody get out of there first because uh obviously being the older guy he uh and he was maybe 16 then i don't know maybe and uh so i let him escape first and then a few months later uh I got to move in with the uh, equipment manager, Rick Mancini, which was a big upgrade. Is that right? So it, yeah, it wasn't a good situation for a bit there, right? Eh? <laughs> yeah, like we knew, I knew what we were getting into because I had been there before and it was like older guys would always just kind of deal with it so that, uh, you know, we'd have that, which other guys did come along and move in there. But so we had three at one point and then, you know, there, there was still guys there that, we're okay with that but cody and i got to uh kind of pick our upgrades through the year yeah so then how do you end up picking rit how do you get there um there, there was a few schools i went on visits to um but not very many and you know it definitely wasn't the um top top choices or anything um was hockey, that right hockey. when they were becoming division one yeah, so actually the first time I talked to um, Scott McDonald was the assistant coach that recruited me. And after uh, the first time I talked to him was after the Midwestern Junior B All-Star game. And he's asking me what my plans are. And I was like, well, I I wouldn't go D3 this year. I would wait, um, you know, if I get a D1 offer, um, I want to go next year. But otherwise I'll come back. And, um, and he's like, yeah, well, we're going, um, D one next year and it's going to be announced in a couple of weeks. Um, good engineering school. I wanted to take something along those lines. And, um, so when we went on the visit there, like academically, it was a way better fit for me. And just, I went to the hockey game. It was in the old arena there, Ritter arena. It's the smallest ice surface 
probably in college hockey at the time, like 180 by 85 and they're small, like 80. So, wide. so it's more like the Ripley arena, not the Lucknow arena. And, and then I don't know, bring, bring the walls in the, it has a, it has a bowl around it and that, but uh, I think it fit like 2,400 people was a sellout, but it was sold out all the time. And um, I, I watched them, they were in D3 at the time. I watched them beat up Newman college, like 10, nothing. And the place was just going berserk every goal. So I was like, yeah, okay. Like I want to, I want to play for that crowd. Yeah, no, that'd be fun. Sold out crowd. Like realistically, it's way more fun to play for a sold out little barn than one of those big new arenas that just have no heart. There's no, those new arenas have no soul to them. Like I, I, you've played in Germany, right? So can we like quickly discuss like how much better arenas are over there? Not like Mannheim, but like the, I guess you didn't even play in the second league. So you don't even know how cool. I, I, I played a game are. in the, I played a game in uh BD Kimes ring though. The old one or the new one? Oh no, this I'm assuming the new one, but yeah, no man, I'm old school. <laughs> All right. I was gonna ask you if you ever got a speeding ticket right in front of the arena because sure have. Yeah, no, yeah, the flash there. Yeah. Yeah. Did you get one? No, but that was like um it was preseason, so it was still like nice out. So once we after we played Beatheim, we're just standing outside the bus just watching people get flashed on their way to like the pool or whatever it is across the road there. And I'm like, uh, oh. guarantee you play there enough years. Wally must've had a speeding ticket there. <laughs> well, no, there, yeah, there's a lot of cameras for speeding tickets, but there was one where like you weren't allowed to go through a lane it was for buses. So every import their first week on the team <laughs> bombs through there, and gets like a 200 euro fine or whatever. And every import does it because they don't know the rules and they bomb through the bus lane thinking it's like Canada. They're like, well, there's nobody in the way. Like, let's just go down the bus lane. And then they take a picture and then boom, you're nailed. <laughs> but yeah. 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 You'd think after uh, like 10 years of that happening to every single guy, there'd be maybe an info packet at the start, but yeah, don't, uh, don't drive down here, but no, they just let it happen. They, yeah, they, the hard they, way. <laughs> yeah. Um, better. Question for you though. Cause I did see you play at RIT and one guy, cause I, I'm from Elmira. It was Brenner, uh, Tyler Brenner. He played there, yeah. right? Did yeah. you play with him long or uh, how long? Um, like a year Honestly, or two? I can't even remember. Like, I, I obviously, I knew who he was before he came to RIT. He stayed with me on uh, on his visit. I think his dad mostly appreciated the uh, how tall our stack of Keystone, Keystone light behind the door was. Um, walking out, he saw it behind the door and, you know, looked, gave it the um, nod of uh, approval. approval and gave us the thumbs up and left. <laughs> and then Brenner came there the next year. But uh, yeah, I, I maybe played only one year with him, or yeah, maybe I think two, that's but, what it was. But um, yeah, he, I, I was still watching the team lots after, and obviously he was a uh, scoring machine. Yeah. No. Okay. Anyways, moving on. So you go from RIT after four, so four seasons of like a, a just getting into a Division One program. So what are your options over there? Cause you go to France, Strasbourg or Strasbourg, France. I've been there. I've been to that city. I, I know what it is. Um, so how do you end up there? Um, so yeah, kind of we're at RIT our, we're the first class of division one players. So, um, you know, of the division three guys, they're still great players and a few here and there go pro different ways. But um, um, like Steve Penizzato was the one guy from our team that signed an NHL deal after our sophomore year with Washington. And, but other than that, we really didn't know what the process was. So I, we, we had guys, my roommate was messaging uh, the Amherst in Rochester himself, like emailing them saying, Hey, uh, we're just graduating here from RIT. Uh, we'd love to, you know, if you guys need uh, guys for the games for the remainder of the year for a tryout, you know, we'd be happy to come down, check out our hockey DB profiles here and stuff. So, like, you know, people would find that so hilarious at any other school, but we just had no idea. 
and just kind of in that transition period like now i'm sure guys know in that but oh yeah um, yeah we were the blind leading the blind on that one and but anyway so our coach um brian hills played a lot in europe so we kind of asked him hey do you know some agents in europe got a list picked one and uh my roommate is from ottawa and wanted to go to france more for the uh to be able to work on his French and get a government job after. So Strasbourg was willing to take us both. And uh, we signed there. Maybe like a week later, an agent messaged me and said, after it showed up on Elite Prospects, and he's like, hey, Bobby, what are you doing? Um, like, I know you could play in the AHL. And uh, I'm like, well, okay, I got about a bit late, buddy, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I know what that's like. Cause like when I was at Western Michigan and I was just a boy from Elmira that goes to Western Michigan and like, you're just there in a scholarship and you just think you're going to play your, your scholarship. And then like, it wasn't until like, I had like a really big year um, that like I had, I had never been contacted by an agent in my life until my junior year of university when I was like up for the Hobie Baker, I had never been contacted by an agent in my life. And I remember other kids getting bugged at 13 years old to have agents. And I never once was asked by one agent ever. So was it like, kind of like yeah. that from Lucknow, and, Ontario? And, and that's what you're like, Hey, well, I guess they're contacting these other guys. If they're not contacting me, I guess nobody wants me. Right. But, uh, yeah. You know, there's, there's definitely another level in the middle there where, okay, the, the guys that aren't the highest demand, there's still spots for them too. And it's, yeah, you need a little more outreach at that point, but um, yeah, I guess you experienced the same thing for a while, but in the end you uh, ended up putting pretty, pretty big numbers. So you get well, the connection eventually. Yeah. But your career is much more successful when we go through it here. <laughs> that was just college, man. Um, you don't get paid in college. Okay. <laughs> you're getting paid now <laughs> um so you go to Strasbourg, which is a beautiful city because i was in like beating uh, like stuttgart area there um so Strasbourg was like the border town to germany so like if we ever wanted to like say like let's go to france for the day like that was the city so we went there a bunch of times it, it was a nice city eh yeah it's like that's honestly it's why i stayed there in the end because um the coach actually didn't really appreciate my style of play, even though I sent him a video showing exactly what I wanted to do. And that's what he signed me based on. But um, then, you know, I was there with my college roommate. We ended up signing another one of his buddies through the year. Um, but yeah, it's like EU parliament is in Strasbourg and beautiful city. We were having a great time and that but uh hockey wise it wasn't really what i was looking for but i yeah. didn't do really well either so um i wasn't i definitely i wasn't above it that's for sure but um it was no, good time. i i i know exactly what you mean because i played an exhibition game against them and i didn't like the vibe of the team i didn't like the vibe of the fans or the arena but like not that you said that i'm just saying from an exhibition game it didn't look like a very fun place to play and as a French team, I don't really think they'd really appreciate a boy from like now Ontario like they would <laughs> guys guys from maybe like Quebec City. But yeah, they they definitely get a lot more imports from Quebec. <laughs> that's for sure. I right, yeah, I, I would I would agree. <laughs> okay, um, so moving on. So after that season, you decide then. So what kind of deals or offers are you getting then when you do decide to get an agent back home? Because I see you end up playing for the Florida Everblades, which I was only there for a playoff series, but what a spot like that. You got to play there for pretty much three seasons or parts of three seasons is like that place is a great place to play hockey. eh? Yeah. That's um, you know, we're always sitting there in Florida being like, you know, if we just got paid a bit more money, you'd play here forever. Oh, yeah. no doubt. But uh, yeah, pretty good, pretty enjoyable. Like when the when you wake up and it's that warm out, your body doesn't hurt quite as much on the way to the rink in the morning. So, um, 
but you, you might have pit stains in your dress shirt by before you get to the rink though but yeah the the germain arena is a little bit warmer than the luck now arena i would say but they they do a good job keeping the ice um I'll, always still good ice there it's those like places in between where it's sometimes warm sometimes cold you get the horrible ice but they know it's going to be hot in florida so they, they just crank the system Okay, so how um, did you end up there, though? Like, how does it happen that, like, because I know that team, back when I played against them, they were affiliated with two different NHL teams. So anybody that was on that team was basically on an NHL deal. So what were you on? No, so I, I signed. Actually, I called Dave Farish, the, you know, um, NHL coach that uh, and former player that uh, is from Lucknow and – cause he coached in the East coast um, earlier in his career. And I just said, Hey, like what's contract wise, what should I be at? Like looking for. And he goes, honestly, the biggest thing I would say, just make sure you sign a straight East coast deal. Because if you sign an American league two way, um, you're stuck to that one team to get called up all year. And you're going to, you're going to have a lot better chances of um, getting called up and sticking somewhere in the American league if you have the freedom to um, go to any team. So I actually had um, yeah, the North American agent pretty much said, hey, like Florida will sign you for this much a week or a um, or hundred bucks less a week, but guarantee you an AHL tryout. And, you know, that's the only, like, that's what you're playing for in the coast um, is the opportunity. So of course, it took the hundred bucks less a week and uh, got to try out in Norfolk. Um, and uh, I, I didn't actually realize at the time how fortunate I was to get on the East Coast League team in Florida until, oh. you know, you get there and OK, yeah, everybody is either on NHL, AHL contracts, and then you maybe have like eight legit guys trying out for two spots on forward and then a bunch of guys for maybe right. one spot on D. So, and the thing is, is when you say like you had um, the AHL tryout, like realistically, even if you sign a contract with F Florida, it's still just a tryout. Like they can gas Absolutely. anybody. They, you know, they, and that's what they told me that at the end of the year, they're like, you know, when we signed you, we actually, we didn't have a spot for you. We kind of thought, um, we saw your video and we're like, wow, this guy can skate. Uh, might as well bring him in, you know? Cause like you said, on the East coast league contract, it's, it's only good day by day. So they tell, you no the next day. And so what was the video? What? Uh, it's just like clips from college that I just cut myself on, uh, the coach's software at the end of the year. And that's how you, you, you would get your, your contracts first two years anyway and then and from there we're gonna get into all this other stuff that's crazy <laughs> um that that's how um this whole career started that's uh that's uh well done sir <laughs> I, I i assume now they would have enough and they probably did have enough clips cut but uh you know they're trying to show you more stuff in college to fix your mistakes than they're showing you your highlight reel. So there was no known, highlight reels. There was I no nothing the good. Reel myself. No, there was nothing good in college video sessions. It was a straight roast session. <laughs> oh man, you would walk out of there. Jeez, you'd feel terrible. Um. Anyways, we better move on. So, um. Okay. So you didn't get to play for the Everblades, but you did get call ups. So you were just on the East Coast deal, but you did get called up, and it looked like those were with were those the organizations that the Everblades were with. Um, my first year wasn't the first year, and I got called up to Binghamton. Um, was uh, outside team, but uh, the assistant coach had played for that uh, for a coach there before, so he recommended me when they called, and uh, then the next year's. Well, I, yeah, um, I was with Binghamton part of the next year also. And then in the third year, the uh, Charlotte was who I, I went to. The, that was lockout year. So um, was kind of expecting to 
have a chance to get an AHL deal, but the lockout happened. So went to Charlotte, um, did well in tryouts, but they had, uh, you know, three NHLers or so on defense there of the young guys, Justin Falk, um, Bobby Saganetti was up the rest of the year and that, so they didn't have room. So I went to Florida to start the year and then they called me back up uh, a bit before the lockout ended. So what did you think of, well, I guess you were playing in Florida. So your East coast experience is completely different than mine, like completely different. You must've liked it. Like everything about it. Yeah. Which teams were you on? Uh, well, just, I was only played one year on an AHL deal. Um, and I played for the Daytona beach bombers of Ohio. Oh, <laughs> when you said Daytona Beach, I'm like, what's wrong with that? And I'm and, like, uh, uh, no, of Ohio. Um, we went to the finals. Like, we actually put out the Everblades to get there. Um, we put them out in the semifinals, just saying in game seven. The, the Daytona Beach Bombers did take down the Everblades. Um, just saying. But Not yeah. Uh, but no, you would have a different experience than Ohio beaches than um, Florida uh, Fort Myers. Did you ever question random question for the pod here? Um, did you ever make it to the Lonnie Kai? I, I met my wife to be at the Lonnie Kai. See, that is just, <laughs> come on. Really? At, at rookie party. Shut your mouth. Really? Rocking, rocking a speedo and a white headband, which, which is absolutely, um, that warms my, I don't heart. know what, you know, not, not a typical word I would use, but douche or whatever um other word you can fill fill in for that um look but the speedo was forced as a rookie and if you're looking like a fool you might as well uh go for it 100 percent. so yeah. i well you when know. it's a rookie party you don't really get to choose all uh, all the things you wear um right but Absolutely. that you met your wife at the lonnie guy that makes me so happy I've stayed it, there. It, at makes, least, a, it makes a lot of guys happy, dude. I've stayed there at least three to four times on Did hockey, like to play. Or? It was roller hockey or ice hockey or like it, yeah. So anyways, I've stayed there. What a spot, but we won the NART roller hockey championship there and we stayed there. And um, that's where the victory party is for sure. That's where oh, the Kelly Cup victory party was. Really? Come on. Really? I was going to ask about that. So you guys party there too? Because when we won NARCH, we partied there. It was me and Andrew Dwyer, Stretch, won (laughs) NARCH, North American Roller Hockey Champions. And you know what? I can't get into all the stories about that night, but we had a fantastic time. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It's Some days you you show up there in the daylight and uh, wonder wonder what's, uh, you, you know, I don't know. There's two different spots, you know, the, the beach in the day is great, but uh, you don't want to see too much of that building in the daylight. And, uh, but at night it'll do, you know? Well, and then you get that little bar at the basement going, eh? <laughs> Absolutely. I, <laughs> I have apparently dug in there. So did you meet her daytime or nighttime? Um, I, I met her daytime. We had a scavenger hunt of things that we had to, um, fine. I, I heard you were jacked. So I guess that makes sense that you're meeting your wife in a bikini, um, on at the Lottie Kai daytime, because I definitely did not meet my wife daytime in a speedo <laughs> on the Lottie Kai beach. So that's good. Go ahead. Yeah, that's, we, uh, had the scavenger hunt of things we had to find. So, um, was going around doing that. And then just once I, uh, ended up talking to her on the beach. I didn't make it too much further on the scavenger hunt and um, pretty much was posted up there for as long as I could manage and I had to leave and do some other activities with the team still, but uh, had told her to uh, meet up with me, told her that we were going to that bar down in the basement, obviously Um, saw her there again. And then, uh, you know, went back to hang out with her pretty much every day. She was on spring break, but, uh, the rest of the week I was drinking chocolate milk. So, um, Uh, chocolate milk, uh, only at dinner. She like, when we had to play the, like 
next day or something, you know, and she, uh, I think that's what got her though. You know, she, that was unique. You drink chocolate milk before games? No, I'm just saying that the day before, like that we went for dinner and she's on spring break. So she's in complete party mode. Um, other than right. that she's on date. Um, and I know I have a game the next day. So I'm so, just going. So you dinner. met, she's on spring break. So where was she going to school? Uh, Michigan State. Okay, so that's how you end up living in Michigan now. That's... I married a Michigander, but I brought her back. Oh, wow. to made, I brought, brought her trade, back eh? to Bruce County, man. I, sorry, yeah. 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 You can go to Michigan. I'm staying here, man. I like it here. Yeah, it's well, at least it's only a four hour drive. I can make it back. That's what, I, that's what Usually, I told that, when, when we're allowed to drive. So across yeah, that, the board, that's so. what I told that's what I told my wife. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Now we uh, we're gonna have to move on from. Uh, so you go up and down your battle in East Coast AHL. You're grinding it out in on the beach in with the palm trees. You're really grinding it out, drinking the margaritas in the coast. Um, so then you do win it. Um, is that the year to decide to? So how do you win it? Who do you beat? Like any stories from that other than the Lonnie Kai? I guess that's the story. I mean, geez, that's. Well, I actually, so the, the first year I was there, I ended up winning the Calder Cup um, that year. But like I played the whole season in Florida, got put out of the playoffs in Kalamazoo. Then uh, pack up, drive home, come back to Lucknow, play the three on three tournament in Lucknow. We win that. I obviously had a really good showing. The scouts were in the stands. I've and, heard they've uh, been there. Yeah, I've heard there's they, some scraps in that tournament too, eh? Yeah, th- there's been a few. But uh, so Binghamton uh, called me like the next week. So I'd already been home for a week. Obviously, I skated all that all weekend then for that tournament. But the rest of the week off, Matt, like a stag and doe come home at five in the morning and get a phone call the next day. Like, Hey, um, Binghamton, um, you know, we talked to Brad Tapper and, uh, we want to call you up for the call to cup playoffs. Um, can you come and do you want to come? And, I, I, obviously, you know, so I'm like, geez, just got home at 5. AM straight to the gym like ride the bike for a while. They said it was going to be another day or so before they'd know for sure. Can can, can I hold on one second, one second, just because this is a global podcast and people are going to be wondering that are not from Bruce County. I know this is locals week, but they're going to be saying, what is a stag and doe, right? So what Okay, just like, I'll say it quick. It's when two people are getting married and um, it's the party before the party where it's, it's not, uh, you're not dressed up. You're in your blue jeans. You, you, you're dressed normal. You're just having a time and you rent out a hall and you have, you have a shindig, right? Basically you have a party yeah. and uh, you have a good time and the money raised goes to the couple, which helps them start their life, right? Absolutely. Stag and Doe Global Podcast. We got sponsors now, folks. Go ahead. Oh, hold on. Wait. Oh, hold on. And our sponsor is... Um, stay in blue folks.ca. Go ahead. And, uh, yeah. So then we, I, they call me while I'm on the bike. You know, I let my parents know they, they're like packing my stuff while I come home, shower, jump in the car. Binghamton is just down past Rochester. So I, I knew the drive pretty well, drove there and, uh, got to hop right into the, Calder Cup playoffs with only eight teams left. So really improved my odds on that one, you know? So you went there from what, how did you jump into the AHL playoffs again? I saw that you had, you had played in the coast all year. Yeah. I played in the coast all year was home already. So then they they needed a player. So they, they had defensemen get hurt. They want, obviously we're looking at who's already been eliminated in the, 
in the East Coast League. So they can still call you up and you've never been part of their team at all the entire season. You're just a guy sitting in luck now. You can just get called up to the HL semifinals or sorry, quarterfinals. Yeah. What? Quarterfinals. Right. So that's A. And I like you couldn't make up a better scenario. So you won an eight shot here, you know? And uh, yeah, I get there. I think we were playing Portland. It was uh, their second round series. So I played that series. Then uh, can I say the- something? Can yeah. I say something? They yeah. must have really, really liked you because every team has like guy. When it comes to playoff time in the AHL, they have guys dressing in the shower. They have guys dressing in the hallways. Like if they were calling you from luck now and you were just in the coast all year, they must have been watching you and must have wanted you to come there because they would have had guys in their organization already to play. They, um, they definitely had a lot of injuries though, but uh, I think it came down to actually Brad Tapper was our assistant coach in Florida. He'd played for um, the D coach. And when he called, he said, Hey, this is who you want. No doubt about it. Take them. And uh, so I, like I had a good start. Definitely my first, uh, couple games were good and uh got off on the right foot so stayed in um I actually against this in the um eastern finals against charlotte i played the first two games then um um patrick weirkoch got healthy he came back in for the um third and fourth game and then uh, i was back in for the start of the finals but i broke my finger um in the first game of finals so which which finger just uh the index one just like putting it down on the ice to block a shot and uh so that was in houston and uh so unfortunately obviously didn't play after the first game because of that but um pretty pretty fortunate spot to get into so you guys won it then. So like you won the whole thing. You won the East Coast in Florida. Now you've or that and you won that was the age. Uh, yeah, I won the Calder Cup that that year, and actually it was the next year. I started in Binghamton for the start of the year. Um, wasn't playing as much. So year. hold on. So the fr- you just won it in the AHL. That's when you get called up out of nowhere. You're back in luck now, and you win it. Yeah. Yeah. So then that's what was with Charlotte. That was with Binghamton. Binghamton. And the next year I signed with Binghamton on an AHL two-way, but Florida still has my East coast rights. So when I'm in Binghamton that year, we're not nearly as good. Um, lost half the guys to the Sens. And um, they're, t- they're asking me if, Hey, can we get your East coast um, rights traded to Elmira? And I'm like, absolutely not. No, uh, <laughs> no, gosh, you know, no. More, more than, more than the, more than how nice it is in Florida versus, uh, you know, Elmira's on the other end of that spectrum. Um, bigger than that is it just kind of like makes them make a decision on you. You know, if you want me, I'm here. They can't send you back and forth every other day, you know? Oh, you know what? We better explain this to the crowd is this is not Elmira, Ontario, where yeah, I'm true. from. This is Elmira, New York, which is in the East Coast, which is, I don't know what it's like. I've never been there, so I'm not going to judge it. But Elmira, Ontario is where I'm from, which is what we discuss on the pod. Yeah, that's we're, not we're what not, we're, we're discussing now. Elmira. No, that's not what we're talking about here. Go ahead. Um, so anyway, uh, you know, kind of around like trade deadline time, um, I got sent back down to Florida. And we actually, in in Florida, we got a couple other guys back from um, AHL teams and just went on a tear. I think we can't think of what it was, but like we were winning every game, 5-1, 6-0, 4-0, and and, um, maybe won like 18 of our last 21 games. And then uh, I think from the, for the playoffs, it was, uh, went 15 and three and won it in Vegas or against Vegas. We actually, we ended up winning it in Florida and, uh, I go to Lonnie Kai. Yeah. Well, the, the GM, the owner 
came in and wrote on the board before the last game. Um, Las Vegas or South Beach, you decide. And we're like, we're looking at each other and being like, hey, let's go back to Vegas for the party. You know, we like they already have the flights booked. We can go to South Beach anytime. That's a two hour drive across the state. It's like this. Oh, hey, they already have our flights booked for the game, but we're not going to need to play it. So we'll go back to Vegas and have our party there. And he heard us saying that walking out of the room. He's like, no, you idiots. I mean, you're going to play in Vegas or we'll hook you up with what you want in uh, Miami. But it was Memorial Day weekend. So we won on maybe like Tuesday. So then it's Wednesday. They're trying to book stuff in Miami for Memorial Day weekend. You know, no go. So then we're then we're back at the Lonnie Kai, but with the credit <laughs> card to just run whatever we wanted. Guys run like, a mock. <laughs> guys are uh, like ordering steak and whatever they can from the restaurant upstairs. Then it comes and they've had three more uh, rum runners with floaters on top and they can't even eat it. So they're throwing in the garbage, but uh, yeah, yeah. No, I, I could see, I could see a, a, a Kelly cup championship, but uh, the Lonnie Kai getting a, a, a Ray <laughs> getting, getting sideways. I've seen an arch championship get sideways there. <laughs> so yeah. it doesn't matter what championship you win. It's, it's a championship, right folks. <laughs> Absolutely. Honestly, you, you know, what's funny. Feel- you know, what's, what's hilarious is I just looked up my notes to see what to talk about and I have them flipped upside down to still talk about that sponsor. <laughs> so apparently I haven't been looking at them very much. Um, so we better get into, uh, um, we got to get away from the Lonnie Kai, man. It's going to get brought up numerous times. I just found out that my roller hockey coach from, when I was recruited to a team in Atlanta as a young teenager to just get, I got called to just play for a team in Atlanta. He's going to come on. And he also played like 500 games in the NHL. So that's good. Um, But anyways, moving on, you go from the East coast HL and winning a championship in both leagues to then going to is there lone roosters of the DEL? And I think he has left. So I'm going to hit pause and he's back folks. He just had I, to I, take a leak and I couldn't do it folks, but I have command. And that's why it's so important that um, I have control because now I have to pee. So now it's his turn to talk. So here we go. Um, yeah, we, uh... that's why, um, active player folks, their active players are still drinking that much water that they have to pee. And, um, that's why guys are still so good when they're at the young age of 32, Bobby Raymond. Um, but anyways, moving on, I have to pee, but you go from Florida and it w- must have been great three years and you go up and down and you do all that, but you got too much other stuff to talk about here still. I know you, you're still playing, so we still have opportunities for another pod, but I want to get into some of your other stuff that we relate to. So you go from there to Iserlone of the Roosters. How was that and how'd that happen? How'd you get there? And I'm going pee. Well, my uh, name coming up again, but uh, Brad Tapper, that was the uh... – D coach in Florida. Well, and as well, the uh, head coach, Greg Poss, um, that tandem actually came from Ezerlone at one point. So Greg um, had been the head coach in Ezerlone. Um, Tapper played for him there. So, you know, kind of uh, lots of good references that um, were able to tell them that I was their guy, even though my resume was a bit smaller than, Um, some of the other guys they could pick up so um, you know I think like a lot of guys going to DEL had better resumes than me but once again those same the coaches I had in Florida had both coached there before um, and they took their word for it that I was the right guy to to get Um, I haven't uh, been listening as everybody knows because I've been peeing but I have a pretty good idea of what happened. Can I give a recap? All right, go ahead. 
Um, you're a really um, hard worker from Lucknow, Ontario, which most people are from there. Um, you're a really good teammate. Um, you're a good hockey player. And the coaches that coached you vouched for you. And um, they were the ones that made things happen for you, just like everything that's happened so far, other than making your own video. Right? That's how it goes down. Yeah, no, I when when coaches have your back and when you're a hard worker and a good dude, you know, you never know what can happen, right? Yeah, like you, you definitely hear that a lot along the way and and there's days you're you're wondering if it's true, but in the end it pays off for sure big time cuz that uh you know, unless you're a special special player, um there's the other 95% of us that are uh needing that edge. Okay. You know what? I always talk about how I can give a player review based on how they podcast. Okay. All right. Can I, can I, I've never actually done one because I think, you know, I, I always say I could do it, but it's just in my head. I'm going to give a player review mid podcast. We're not even in the European career where you get to play for posh Mannheim. Okay. You ready? You bet you'd be submitting this to uh, elite prospects as well after, right? I don't know if they're that big, but they do give me a lot of information to determine these things. But no, this is based on uh, this last discussion here. So I think that you're a leader. You're probably usually an assistant captain or captain. You're the leader of the team. Everybody works a little harder in the gym because you're in there just giving her buckets um and everybody else works a little bit harder and you may not be the most talented guy but everybody else on the team is like holy shit look at this guy go and you bring the whole team together and the coaches are like holy shit look at this team come together and then you win stuff and um, then your coaches vouch for you. And then maybe a player that isn't that talented, that maybe wouldn't get the opportunities. Um, they get presented to a guy like that because of the person he is and because of how hard he works and because he, he isn't just doing it. Be, he's doing it because he wants to, and it's bringing everybody else together. Cause I have been around guys like you. So how did I do? In my player review, which you're, um, you could be on the power play. Um, you can put up points, um, but you can also probably lay a devastating body check. Am I wrong? Uh, I, I, for the most part, I'd say you're doing pretty well. Okay. I, I think if thanks, I man. Think Joe Rogan, problem, a hockey podcast, folks. I got a sponsor now. My my agent, you know, should uh, watch his back. I'm just saying, I, I have a lot of players and teams texting me now that I uh, have a podcast and um, everybody says I do it pro bono, but folks, I have a sponsor now. Get paid. But seriously, how do I do? Um, def- I know you can't say that because it's a podcast. You can't talk, you know, you can't talk about yourself like that, but I can just tell. So anyways, moving on. Um. I'm just saying I, I can read people and um, that I can tell what a hockey player is. You shoot left. No. Yeah. The, the only, the only thing I'm uh, questioning there is somehow it doesn't all work out the same way when I was captain, you know, we weird. Uh, but for me, but, it was almost, do you think it was because stretch was your first captain? Do you think that's the problem? That, that was all I had to go by, you know? Well, that, but, if, yeah. if that's the guy teaching you how to be a captain, thank God you tr- blazed your own trail. My God. It, it was a bit weird. Like, uh, I kind of felt as captain that people thought the things that I would say or do were forced, that I was yeah. trying to fill that role, where when you're not, um, they know you're just doing it because that's what you would do. You know? I know exactly what you're trying to say is that um, when, when people – like nominated you captain or gave you the captaincy you 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 almost felt like you were supposed to do something differently but it, like that's why it happened was you're just being you right well that's a, yeah for sure like i you have that kind of 
secondary thought of what am I supposed to do, but then also uh, you're you're thinking like when, when you do do something, other guys are thinking, oh, he's supposed to do that. Where when you're not captain and you do it, they know you're just doing it from the heart. So it uh, it's completely you know, yet. No, obviously, I, people right. definitely do it very well um, as the captain. But uh, it was just like a little bit of uh, a, a tough um, scenario that I found a little awkward or a little bit weird about it. Um, yeah. yeah, no, I, I just picture you being like the guy that's good, willing to, to block the shot and like the shot, like guy's going to take a shot. You're going to jump in front of it with your face to win the game. That's just like and, and like some of those guys don't want the, especially in Europe um the all that comes with being like a captain right like in a captain in europe is like a different thing which are we there we are there now well kind of um so anyways am i wrong like you probably did i saw you you're, you're along the right lines I, i'm i'm not me i'm not the uh 100 the guy that's uh blocking the shot with my face but um <laughs> i'm i'm closer to the top of the list than the bottom for guys that might um, right but do you Certain you hit scenarios. you hit people hard too, don't you? When, when it when it's uh you know, in the, when it's the playoffs, I'll take it. But uh, you know, there's there's times that you don't need to take it in the face either. There was a lot of those times for me. A lot <laughs> of those times, it would have to be pretty serious. Um, would that be the really right time for that? But I'd take her in the shin pads like nobody's business. Okay. <laughs> uh that's why i was the assistant captain too but just i was like a team guy you know like you know bring the boys together and take them all out (laughs) i just was making sure everybody's having a good time everybody i feel as though if i if a team had you and me doing that like you are pushing everybody in the gym and doing that and i'm pushing everybody together as like the team and this and that and like look at him go like let's go rah rah i think it would a bit whoa holy cow eh jeez that, that that's a key factor man that gets it going for sure like too bad i have a bad knee now i'm fat and i'm old and out of shape so here we go moving on it's all over we just podcast now um so you go from one year in Izzard loan, which you would have done what you did on all these other teams. So then somehow you get, which this is my curious question is you go to posh Mannheim, like you go to Mannheim where they probably have iPads and all this crap. And they're like, look at how you're holding your stick. Look at how you're flexing it. Look at the video. And you're just the boy from luck now, right? Like, yeah, I, Actually, um, the GM, Teal Fowler was Teal Fowler was the GM at the time, and he had uh, he'd coached in Ezer Loan as well. With um, or he played in Ezer Loan, coached with Poss in Mannheim. I don't know if they had any communication before. I never really heard on that. Okay, hold on. Hold I'm, on. Do yeah. you think anybody in the world's ever listened to? Well, I guess yeah, Mennonites, but like. G- can do sprechen ein bisschen Deutsch? Um, my knowledge is nicht so good. Um, nicht so good, aber du bin in Deutsch in, oder für acht oder neun Jahre, oder? Sieben oder acht. Ja, ich kann verstanden. Leck mir am Arsch. Okay, go ahead. Well, okay, back aber, to English. Back to English. Go ahead. Move on. Um, so anyway, but uh, so Teal Fowler, <laughs> I know he'd seen me on the uh like during a practice in uh peoria illinois um when i was playing with charlotte i was out there doing drills on the ice and he was actually there to see why witka um who they were looking at bringing over and he i think i don't know the drills he saw me doing whatever he watched i played well and he really wanted to bring me there so he actually tried the year before but the um, owner wouldn't let him sign me because I hadn't played in the NHL. Yeah. So then he's like, Oh, but now a guy got hurt. Um, We could give you a tryout deal for three months. And my agent's like, Hey, you might get paid more for three months in either loan. Then you'll get paid for the year. You mean in Mannheim? Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, 
you get might get paid more for three months in well, Mannheim. and you'll have it on your 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 resume that you played for Mannheim, right like so so anyway he's uh but anyway that still the owner said you know because i hadn't played in the nhl um not to sign me so i went to easer loan and uh obviously i've been after a good year um in that league then he was able to sign me and went there okay and, so how was it did you like Mannheim? because like the biggest thing is like you always want a chance to win you know and and you won did you not yeah we did and like you knew that you had a chance to win we actually had um jeff ward was our coach um and i i didn't play my best through the year but he treated me great um kept trying to give me opportunities like one one game even in the middle of the year he's like hey we got a big enough lead for first place i know you're not happy with how you're playing i think you're doing fine but what do you need to to get it going you know who do you want to play with do whatever you want for these next two games and just don't worry about it and i was like okay like uh it wasn't really about who I was playing with or who I wasn't playing with. Um, but anyway, like pick my D partner, went out there, you know, just had the complete freedom. And uh, I don't know what, I didn't necessarily turn it over for, but I, you know, missed a check and they went down and scored like first shift of this experiment anyway, um, for a, for a quick dash and, um, but I, I played I played real well later on in the season and uh, really well in the playoffs. So um, it went well in the end. But uh, I could see you being one of those boys that are like you're just you're just so hard on yourself. Like, hey, are you? Um, like, but obviously, like I'm I'm more. Uh, I think playing in Lucknow, one of the biggest things was. Like you, you have to impact the game so much at both ends of the ice, you know? And so I, for me, it's a lot easier to save a goal than it is to score one. So, um, I, I'm just, I, that's why I always paid attention to my own end so much. Cause I knew, uh, scoring them wasn't quite as easy. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have no idea where we are now. We've just been chatting, but um, I do want to, I did want to know, cause I think it's when you're in Mannheim as you do play um, for team Canada. Like, so not everybody in the world, there's not many of us. I know I never did except for roller hockey, if that counts. Um, but you got to play for team Canada in the Deutschland cup, which is folks. If everybody doesn't understand it, it's basically, the same as the uh, Spangler Cup, but in Germany, and it's the best German players from Canada instead of the best players in Switzerland. But it's kind of the same type of deal, right? Yeah, pretty similar. Like our team was maybe uh, half guys from Germany, and some of the guys were from uh, playing in Sweden that year or Finland. Um thinking where else if anybody was playing elsewhere but uh but like that you're on that team and like you were on the florida everblades on an east coast one-way deal like that's crazy man nobody else does that well i think a big big thing that we kind of like skipped in this just because it was uh not a not one of the questions was uh between the year in france and the year in um florida i i knew that that was like okay if hockey's like it was in france for me i'm done you know because money wise it wasn't worth it um that year was more for the experience and i was like well if um i need to take my best shot at really being good enough to make a living yeah a uh, career yeah that year i started training with brian o'reilly and that obviously that's where I uh, met Mirzi and stuff and training with Brian definitely changed uh, my mentality on a lot of things. Um, how, how I trained and uh, you know, definitely 
improve so my what, game. Offense. What is he all train like? Because I like I don't know him. I I tr- I skated with Ryan O'Reilly and Mirzy like for a handful of times, which we were trying to figure out if you were out there for those. Would you have remembered a guy out there in Cardiff outfit if you were out there? Um, I would have, but I maybe I can't think if I, I don't, I don't think, think I was you were like, out there. I, I know, like I've, I've known your name all along. So if somebody was yeah. like, no, but asked. anyway, so what does, what is O'Reilly's old man? Like what, like, I know he's like a coach, but it's not just like training or, I, like what what is he what is it I think um so a lot of things when he's doing the physical training a lot of what he's watching for is how you're reacting um to things how um definitely your breathing techniques um I held a lot of tension especially in my shoulders and in places where you know obviously you need tension in your body performing whichever muscles are performing, but you've also got, um, like I was putting unnecessary tension that was causing me to like, almost be like nervous, you know, situations with the puck and stuff. Um, instead and of being confident with, and being loose and being in the moment, right? Well, like the right ones and definitely, um, definitely being in the moment. Um, and yes, what your, what your mind is, you know, thinking about or not, not thinking about, obviously at that point, um, kind of the different scenarios for that of that you need to be in a learning mindset at some points for new skills or practices or things, but then you also need to obviously in the game is different where you just need to be in flow. Um, and then also just like mental prep of, the outlook of uh, definitely helped. Um, one of the biggest things playing in the East coast and you're playing four games in five days was, yeah, you get to that third and fourth game and some guys are just, you know, hoping to get out of there and get to the bar, obviously. And, uh, you know, for me, it was okay. I, f- I don't feel like I feel like crap, but these guys feel like crap too. And I just got to make sure that I'm better when I'm bad than, than they are today. So, um, I, I think like I was able to, you know, take advantage on, on some of those opportunities where other guys at that level weren't as focused. Oh, that's, uh, like, it's really interesting. Cause I, yeah, I don't think I met you. Uh, but like when I first moved here, I sit on the Stan Butler episode is like, I just went to the YMCA in Godrich and started skating. Like just, I heard it was free ice at 6 a.m. And I started skating and then uh, Mirzy and O'Reilly and Cal or Ryan and Cal and like a bunch of them all came out and I'm in my out, my, my pro gear and I just moved here. So yeah. then I, uh, they're like, well, do you want to skate with us? And I was like, well, yeah. <laughs> so then I, I met all of them and that's like where I met Mirzy, which is how we got in contact um so yeah it's all just a very small hockey world right like especially up here <laughs> yeah no doubt yeah okay so we got to keep going so you play in the deutschland cup we got sidetracked again folks sorry about that but then you go from Mannheim back to your honey hole there that is the you are an is there alone rooster because that year you are the have the most goals by a D in the DEL. So my scouting report is a little off, folks. Right? Well, I I had Mike York passing to me. So um So you're just taking clap bombs? And mostly wristers. And and I actually had uh a Could guy have that... been that good of a pass if you had to wrist it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, one, one of the guys that, you know, doesn't get credit for the job, but standing in front of the net, Brody DuPont, just standing short side and moving his shoulder every time. So um, a lot of the goals were pretty similar. Wow. So it just was like a power play that worked. Um, that and uh, 
you know, a, f- a few random ones along the way otherwise, but uh, that definitely, as no. it depends, you well, know, that's how many, good, man. A percentage of their power play goals are going to, um, that's what's going to get you out there. Okay. So, like, this is how ridiculous this whole career is, man, which is still going. Like, it, like, is now we're going from there to Red Bull Salzburg, which is, folks, like, I mean, their sponsors is a bit, but it's one of the bigger teams in Europe. It's going to be one of the better teams in the Austrian league every year. They want to be in the champions hockey league every year and they should be the best. So you're going there now from Iserloan. So you go from being an underdog in the DL and trying to make the playoffs to now the pressure's high now, right? Yeah, definitely a a little different feel that way. Um, You know, you, you can win a lot of games and it's still not the, not a good scenario. So especially um, as an import, right? Like, are you supposed to score over there? Especially when you led the, the DL and goals as a defenseman, are you supposed to be like the offensive defenseman now? Um, like the, the, the catalyst. I, I don't think like, I, I don't think it was expected that I was the guy that way. Like even when I had the most goals, then I didn't have as many assists. I only ever had half a point a game, you know? So, but um, I have to give a disclaimer. Greg Poss from Florida was the coach of Red Bull. So I was kind of waiting for um, a better deal after the season. And he got that job in um, Salzburg. I gave him a call to congratulate him. And it was, it was about a 20 second, well, maybe 30 second phone call. So, Hey, Greg, congrats on the job in Salzburg. He's like, yeah, thanks, Bobby. Uh, are, are you coming with me? I was like, yeah. He's like, all right. Uh, who's your agent? Yeah. Okay. And, uh, that was it hung up. And so um, I got a few things on that one. First off. My scouting report is dead on because that guy knows he could only win in Salzburg with you and because of what you've done in the past and how you've brought a team together. And he knows that you're not that worried about the big contract like most guys go into Red Bull and you're going to try and bring all – well, I'm not going to say that on here, but there's some prima donnas maybe that play for the Red Bull Salzburg team compared to maybe – you know, the second league German teams that I'm a part of, but um, he knows that you're going to bring those guys together and that's how you're going to win. And I totally get his side of it as a, like now that I'm in like a manager position in the real world, like more of a coaching position is like, you need the good players to play good and you need guys that bring the team together and um, that's what you were doing and you didn't need a big contract to do it. You just wanted the opportunity. And so then you guys end up winning it one of the years, right? Uh, No, actually it's it. Well, so no, you didn't win it it in Austria. Those are all the other years. What did they'll say in Austria? They'll say Austrian champ. But the thing is we in uh, we lost to Balzano in the finals of our league but they're from Italy. So goofy a thing. They give you the silver medal from your league, but they give you a gold medal as Austrian champ. But like nobody cares if they're Austrian. Because you champ. lost to Bolzano. So we lost in uh, seven games to Bolzano. Oh, what was the score? Um, Game seven. You don't want to I talk can't remember about now it, but... if it was three, two or four, two. Um, but one of my buddies from Lucknow, Brad Gilchrist, flew over just for that night. Oh, and then you lost. He flew there, was in the, actually, I got a penalty in the first period and he knocked on the glass behind the penalty box. I didn't realize it was him at the time, but uh, then after the game, he's there and he has to fly back the next day and we lost. So he made the overseas oh. round trip and, and you, know, you didn't even win. No, that's, that's a, that's an expensive trip, and that that's too bad. Cause like, how is he really gonna enjoy it if you won? Like, how is he really like? He's not even gonna be there for the parade or anything. He's he's just gonna battle, you know. He's gonna well, like. Was he gonna was he gonna delay the the trip then? If if you won, I 
who knows? I you can't. So because you guys lost, he was like, "Well, just get me on the next plane out of here." <laughs> yeah, I don't know if like no no clue if he had the op- the ability to extend it at all, but uh, hmm. no guessing with that guy. Okay, well, I don't think I know him, but anyways, moving on. So how's Salzburg then? Because like, there's pressure as a team. There's pressure, but it's a hell of a city, right? A hell of a city. Like one of the, if, if you can take all your friends with you, I'd live there forever. That's for sure. Um, you know, like we were skiing on the days off. Um, so you never had in your contract, you couldn't ski. It, it just said it's, it's such a part of life in Austria that they, they, I don't even think they, they don't think they can stop you. So it said in our contracts, um, no ski racing. Okay. Amongst the other things. So as long as we weren't racing, we were. And did good. you get free passes then? Could you ski for free? No, we just, uh, but it, it's way cheaper than it is in North America too, just because there's so many options, you know? So, um, yeah. Good. Um, anyways. Yeah. Okay. So, um, nice city, but, uh, Who's the coach there? Is it the crazy guy, Paget or Pajot or whatever the name is? No, no. Guys... Uh, Pierre Paget was. Oh, no, sorry. You before. said the coach, right? Because yeah. you, your buddy got the job. But that's who you get there, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Paget was there before, but. Uh, been... Okay. I had that written down oh, in my you're... notes, and then you're right. You told me who was the coach. My bad. Okay. So, how you were there for three years, though. Like, that's a long time. Yeah. Well, so Poss was there for three years. So I was there for three years. And uh, then in our last year, is that we actually, we made it to semifinals in Champions League, which for an Austrian team is obviously uh, pretty far out. But um, we, of course, of all teams to lose to, we lose in the uh, semifinals to Red Bull Munich. So it's like... A, any other time would be that we made it to the semifinals was pretty decent accomplishment, but then it's like, Oh, you're, uh, no, you're, um, you essentially like you're lost your big brother kind of scenario, you know? So you just got put back into being the second string and we were actually, we were kind of on a, we were on a slump through the Austrian league while we were beating like Ulu, who's the best team in Finland and and all these other teams so um once we once we lost um out of champions league and you know still weren't out of that slump in uh yeah. in the austrian league um Paz got fired it is bizarre over there how it can work like i played in the uk league and there was the, they were called challenge cup games and then regular season games. And I was like, well, a game's a game. Like, let's just go play and see who wins. But then like one game mattered for one thing. So like you, you'd go on elite prospects and it'd be like, well, there's these points for these games and there's these points for these games. And you're like, well, aren't we all just playing a game? Like, and it's all and very guys, bizarre. And some guys have wildly different stats lines for like different between the two. Yeah. Like, and they're all just the same game. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, um, so all in all though, did you get hooked on Red Bull? Like was it just a fridge full of Red Bull and you were just all jacked up for every game or what? Uh, it, it was obviously the fridges were stocked, but uh, I didn't, I maybe only drank maybe I'm going to say eight in my three years there of like real, like the Red Bull, the energy drink. I drank, drank a few more of the Red Bull natural colas, which were definitely a different taste and initially didn't like, but, um, once you had a, got used to it a little bit, it was, it was all right. It was good. Okay. Well, I, I, I've never had any of those. I, I, you don't hear about Red Bull like you did at Western Michigan with the Red Bull vodkas and the vodka bulls at the, yeah. uh, tab room there but that was back in college back when you were in the day probably it was red bull pretty hot back then absolutely 10 10 bucks all you can drink and you felt like it was an obligation to drink the most expensive thing you could get right and see how 
alert you could be with Red Bulls. Um, okay. So you go and you, so you talked about a bit about the champions hockey league there, like any cool trips, like any cool countries you went to, like who do you think are the best teams you played the, in the champions league? Cause it says you've been in it four times. I like uh, the, the Swedish teams are always the toughest. Um, I think the coolest place was uh, we played Prague with Mannheim. And that year we were actually eliminated before our last game. That was for our last champions game um, of the round Robin part. So we played in Straubing, which is on the border or like uh, in Germany, closer to Czech. So we went directly from there and we're in Prague for three days um, before the game that didn't matter to us. So, um, you know, we had a little bit more freedom to explore the city and stuff. It was pretty, uh, pretty cool place. Yeah. I, yeah. Prague is an unreal place. I, we went there. I, I mentioned it on the pod. I got engaged there. Hell of a city. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh yeah. Gorgeous. Um, so yeah, so from lockdown, Ontario, you have really, uh, spread your wings, eh? Cause I, like I've been to the arena and from that to be like where it all started. Um, and now you're playing in all these huge arenas all over the world. And, um, you know, we thought your German would be a little bit better by now. Um, uh, but you know, well, you know, we'll work I, on it. That's okay. I, I was fully expecting to go to maybe Sweden and, you know, prayers of Russia. Um, when I went over there, didn't focus on it the first few years and uh now i'm oh i i actually get it because you've been playing in the leagues with 10 or 11 imports and i was playing leagues with like four and yeah. then you could end up with a couple guys you might not get along with but like the the german guys were some of my best buddies so then i was out with them all the time and then you get to you it, it's different in the dl than the the, the second league because you there's not yeah, as many with, imports and you, you hang out more with the German guys and you, you really get, I think, get a little bit more into the whole thing. Yeah, for sure. Like with, with so many imports in both um, DEL and in Austria, nobody's speaking, even the Germans are hardly speaking German at the rink. So, um, and for the most part, I'm a, at the rink at home kind of guy obviously we have like team has fun together and stuff but um you, you don't end up seeing too much german and that's crazy to me because like i was hanging out with uh like my buddy's guy being hammer episode seven hammer the german guy um where we talk a lot of german actually that episode but that was because like i was going out with the german guys right because i didn't have that and then you get a couple few guys like that maybe aren't similar backgrounds as you but like i really think that if you and i were on a team holy moly that would be a recipe for success because i do my thing which is different than your thing which i always needed guys like you and then i could do my thing which is was like you know i think you can tell what my thing is but um like i totally get what type of player you are, what type of person you are. And I think, uh, I, yeah, I, 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 I'd play on your team any day, buddy. <laughs> Doesn't matter what I, age I'm, you are. You're only 32. I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm, uh, banking on you to score a lot within about, uh, eight feet of the net. Yeah. 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 Most of them around there. Yeah. Yeah. I would say Maybe not, but yeah, no, uh, I, I don't know, even know what I am. I just, I don't know. I'm, I don't yeah. know. I, I, I didn't have to even go to your elite prospects page when you were playing in Europe. Cause it would just come up with like the top five scores on the left side of elite <laughs> prospects there. And I could just see you there when, uh, whenever uh, you know, two came up. So well, when you're five eight and out and like not um, like jacked, um, you pretty much have to score or you don't have a job. Um, that's pretty much how hockey works in or, any league. Or you can also play defense, 
and and then you're instantly a skilled defenseman and that's the that's the route i went with well you have the most goals in the dl one season so right. that pretty much i i gave up on being a forward and uh, uh you know just well i think personally like this is the first episode in uh in locals week and uh this is also our first time having a sponsor which if you put in the code wally20 if you go to stayinblue.ca you can go on golf trips right now it's going to be golf trips folks they're going to open it up in ontario anytime we're going to be ready to golf and uh if you book with them and you put in code wally20 that's 20 percent off folks i'm just telling you then it would be official the first person that books the first person that books, it is official. I make money drinking beer with my friends. You know what I mean? Hey, oh, that's a that's a dream. What a it's dream! A, it's a dream. It, this is the real world support, we live in. Support a brother, eh? It's the real world we live in, folks. Wally can get paid to drink beers with his friends if you stay at stayinblue.ca. And, um, like, to be honest, dude, I had never met you. I didn't know you. Um, and like now I feel like I do know you. And ev- now when everybody asks me around here, if I know you, um, like when I work at Superheat or when I'm around town coaching or whatever it is, and everybody asks, do you know, Bobby Raymond, he plays here or there, like, now I know you. I know everything about you, man. And uh, it's been great. And I'm very, honestly, from the Lucknow Arena, um, I've been there. I've seen it. Um, it's a great town with great people. And I understand why you're so close with all your friends from there because there's great people around here. Um, I get it. And uh it's going to be tough for you if you're going to be living in Michigan, but um, I just want to thank you um, for, for coming on the pod, but uh, I got my wife to move to Bruce County. So I just going to say like, you know, you won a lot of championships, but I guess I won like the big one. I guess, I guess, uh, I guess you wear the pants and uh, maybe I don't, you know, but uh, yeah, thanks for having me on. And, Obviously, yeah, same. I obviously followed your career along on Elite Prospects all the time and, um, you know, hadn't, hadn't met you in person or anything. And uh, soon enough, we probably will. Oh, definitely. And, I can, and then I can get the details on yours, on the, on the, the inside details uh, unreleased. Oh, those are the post recordings that's about to happen. So um, we're about to hit end recording and we're actually going to get to really get to know each other, folks. So this has been episode one of Locals Weeks, which is Lucknow, Ontario, Bobby Raymond. And if we want to recap, he um, basically worked for everything he's got and has a ridiculous career. He's even played for Red Bull Salzburg and uh, Mannheim, Germany. Like, these are the best jobs in Europe. And uh, you know what? He worked for everything he got. He got. So uh, that's a luck now, boy, for you right there. And that has been another episode of Two Ales and Hockey Tales brought to you by... Uh, um stayinblue.ca wally20 folks